Hey guys, it's Robin, our Island Crafts. Welcome to my craft room. This is my Whip It Wednesday video where I show you what projects I've been working on during the week, whether I just picked it up and looked at it or I actually spent some time working on it. I have no baby quilts this week. Pop on over to yesterday's Talk To Me Tuesday and you can see the scary, cute, cool, retro, funky looking girl quilt that I have that I might start on soon. This week, I made port pillows. I made 50 of them. That was my goal for this year as I turned 50 in February to make 50 projects for charity. So I've met my goal now. Everything else after this is just icing on the cake. So whatever I want to do, if I want to switch things up and I don't want to work on any more charity projects or I want to keep working on them or find something new, I am covered. I met my quota. But now I might just want to do 50 of every charity project that I start. So this could be dangerous. So last Friday Sew With Me video was how to make these port pillows. They're good for cancer patients who have a port in to get their chemo and other IV therapies. They're also good for any other types of patients. I know cystic fibrosis patients use them, uh, maybe MS patients, anyone with any type of a illness or disease or situation where they need to have repeat IVs to get fluids or their treatments or anything like that. There's, there was a discussion down in the comment on the different things that people have that they use them for, but just know that they work really well for to cushion the seat belt when you have a port or some other device. Some people have, they were mentioning that like they've lost a lot of weight or family members have lost a lot of weight and they become bony in the collarbone area. So the seat belt will rub on that and irritate it. So this works good for that too. One of the things I forgot to mention in that video that I saw on a video, 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 is instead of putting this right onto the port, that this one lady recommended that she wears hers above it so it holds the seat belt off the port and she also doesn't have to worry about the pillow itself pushing on the port. Especially if it's a new one because they tend to be very sore because it's a surgical area. That you know they have to physically cut your body open to go ahead and put the port in. So she wears it above where her port is so it holds the seat belt off and that way there's nothing there to irritate it. One of the things I wanted to mention is I have these stuff with fiber fill. And for once in my crafting career, I actually ran out of fiber fill. I have never done that before. So for the last 10 or so, I took some polyester batting that I had that I don't use. It was given to me. And I shredded it. And I put it in. And it kind of makes this nice little cushion here that's a little bit thinner. Well, quite a bit thinner than these. These I thought would be nice for compressing down. I Well, like I said, I didn't know how thick to make them. So I went ahead and used that and I kind of like how I still can't feel my fingers through it, but it has it's nice and small and doesn't have any extra lumps. So I'm going to go ahead and continue using the rest of that batting up for my next round of pillows because there's always going to be a next round. As long as they keep using them at the cancer center, I will keep making them. Now while that was really fun to push it off the table, there's the only one here in the craft room is me and I'm going to have to pick them up, but I'll worry about that later. I did grab some time since I didn't have a baby quilt this week. I started working on the the preemie shirts again. I've got these all stitched around. I went ahead and pinked them. Then these this small batch will get ready to turn and then I can do the top stitching, add the Velcro, put the little tag in. This part is like the quick and simple part. It's the turning it around and getting it all pressed and pulling out all the, the little tabs and stuff and figuring out where everything goes. That's where it's more of a problem. But that's okay, it's not that big of a deal. I'll work my way through it and I'll find my rhythm and things will be fine. I made some black binding for my bug quilt. Nothing exciting there, but every quilt, well not every quilt needs a binding, but these baby quilts need bindings. And I'm trying to make sure that I have the binding done with the top or within that next week so that I don't have to worry about it and try to figure out binding later. And I thought just pure black might look good around this yellow and the green. So I just went with a straight black binding. One of the things that when I was cutting up all these port pillows, just because of the way I was cutting the fabric and from different shapes and there was pieces left over, I have all these scraps now to go ahead and process and to go through. So I think that's what I'm gonna probably do today. Work my way through these scraps and get them cut down 
If I can find some that can go into two and a half inch squares, I'll use that for the nine patch and four patch a day project that I haven't touched in two weeks. I really want to get back to that this week, so I'm going to go ahead and get these processed, cut out a whole bunch of different size squares, and if I can't get the two and a half inch squares, I'll cut them into strips, and then they'll be ready for all kinds of stuff. So I already had some things, these things were already in this bucket waiting to get processed, and then I just added in the rest. I'm not even going to show you the big old bin of fabric scraps that I still have to go through. I worked on the dragon, the second dragon that's going to be turned into a lovey. This is his second little face, and I think I might have done the little snouts a little different because they seem to be sticking out more this time, but that's going to be okay because... You know, the more you make a project, the more you follow a pattern, the easier it is. This wasn't a difficult pattern, but it had a couple a couple gray areas that I did have to try to figure out a little. And it was easier to figure it out the next time around once you knew what you were doing. But I've got all my parts. I've got the wings. I've got the two arms. I've got ears. I've got horns and spikes. So once I get this head finished and stuffed... Then I'm going to be able to start right into the blanket, and then that'll be the end of it. Because, well, I have to put the pieces on afterwards, but that'll be the most part of the crocheting. And that's going to be the fun part. That's the part I'm looking forward to next. And for anyone that's been wondering, this crochet hook has helped a lot with my shoulder pain. If, if I've done too many things, like if I use, if I rotary cut too much, or if I use an iron, because it tends to get heavy and it's that same type of motion, if I do that too often, then my shoulder will already hurt. And then when I crochet on top of it, it just kind of makes it worse. But if all I'm doing is crocheting and I don't do it for more than a couple hours a day, this hook has helped out a lot. So thank you very much, Fairy Godmother, who sent them to me. Fairy Craft Mother, Fairy Quilt Mother, however you want to look at it. They have worked really well. Which is great because I love making these loveys and I'm hoping to go ahead and start making some more throughout the year as time goes by. When I can fit it into my very, very busy schedule. I've been working on my socks in an effort to get these off the needle so I can start on a new pair. I am at the ribbing so I have got the heel all set on this sock. I'm not doing shorty short socks, but I'm not making them tall either. After I finish the heel, I like to do 25 just rounds of regular stockinette stitch here, just, you know, in a round. And then my goal is to do 25 rounds of ribbing, but I usually only make it through 15 before I get bored. I do a one by one twisted rib. This sock was down here last we saw. Same spot for both of them, just starting the heel. So I've got the heel. And now I'm just getting ready to do my 25 rounds of simple knitting all the way around. The plan is to have these off the needles by the time we talk next Wednesday. And that's it. That I don't want to say that's all I worked on because it took me a couple days to go and work through those port pillows. Maybe two and a half between the cutting and the sewing and the stuffing and the re-sewing. Oh, I want to show you one thing with those. Instead of doing the straight stitch across the so uh, across the end to close it, I did go ahead and use one of these little feather stitches. And I thought that made sure that I got, because when you tuck in, sometimes you, I worry about missing a piece uh, that it might poke out a little bit. So using this, it gave it a nice decorative edge. It didn't look just like a straight stitch. So I, like I said, decorative edge. It made sure everything was nice and closed in. So I really like that. I tried a couple different stitches, but this is the one that didn't use a ton of thread, didn't take forever to do, and I like the way it looked in the end. I did cut out some fabric for playing with, and I'm not sure about my color combinations, but I started cutting out, I have one of those go cutters, and I have a Drunkard's Path a die for it. So I went ahead and I started just cutting out some fun colors. I'm not sure which ones are going to go with what yet. But I just cut these all different out. Just had some fun going through some of the fabrics I had to see, you know, which ones might go together. I'm, I'm not saying that these are going to go together, but I did cut a few of these and I thought worst comes to worst, I can just go ahead and mix it up with the black. And then I have some of this blue that looks like paint on it that I always think is kind of cloudy. And then I have these little fun florals. I'll see what I can do to see which ones will go together. 
And then if none of that goes together, I'll just pull more fabric out of the stash and just go ahead and cut some more up because it's really quick and easy to just run these through the die cutter. The last thing I want to show you is I was re I received a little gift in the mail. I received some fabric scraps. I get messages a lot. People want to send me their scraps that they're not using. I had some fat quarters that are in there. And I always say yes, because I like to play with other people's scraps. A lot of times it'll be similar fabrics to the stuff I already have. But like things like this, I don't have this fabric. And some of it's already sewn together into crumbs. Some of these were left at the guild table where they go to guild where people just didn't use them anymore. There's some, and I think it's batiks in here. I'm not, yeah, there looks like some batiks that are in here. So these are going to be fun to put together and play with. It'll work good for more crumb blocks. It'll work fun for just cutting them up into random scrappy quilts. See, here's some crumbs that are already started. Just go ahead and trim them up and add more to them because I really do enjoy doing the crumb blocks. But what I really wanted to show you is I got a couple of little gifts that came with this. Move my basket out of the way. I ran out and ran some errands on Saturday and I was going to wait until I got home to open the package because I kind of knew if sometimes when you guys will email me and, and you'll tell me you're sending something and then it'll just slip my mind because sometimes it takes a little bit you're like when I'm done with this project I'm going to send you my scraps I'm like okay great thanks or I'm putting it together a package you know and I thank you I really appreciate it but for me it kind of like goes right out of my mind there's just so much going on that I don't even think about it again because there's no sense wondering because I know they're going to be scraps so I'll be surprised when it shows up so I'm always surprised when I go to the P.O. box and there's a package in there so I'm, I'm at Sam's parking lot after I went and did some, picked up some prescriptions there and stuff. So I thought, oh, I can't wait till I get home. It's hot out. The air is nice and cool in the car. Let me just go ahead and open up this package. So I started rooting my hand in there, digging around, looking through the scraps and stuff to see what was in there. And I felt something hard. So I pulled it out and wrapped in plastic was this fun Arizona shot glass. It's a dry heat. Nowhere 10 miles, water 100 miles. Look at the poor little uh, snake and everything. So this is really cool. I like how it's got a, they, they did a white background so that when it, all these colors will pop up nicely. So I'm like, all right, that's really cute. Cool, right? I love shot glasses. So then I, I don't drink, I don't do shots, but shot glasses are fun. You know how it is. So I'm like digging through, looking for some more stuff again, right? And then I pulled out this. Look, it's a cactus shot glass. Cacti? I was laughing hysterically in the Sam's parking lot. If anyone had seen me, they'd have thought I was a lunatic. It's got all the little bumpies, like little the pricklies on the cactuses in here and stuff like that. And I don't know why. It was just I was having a bad day, and this just made me laugh. It just it just brought such a smile to my face. One more thing. Well, a couple more things. There was a quilt pattern for a silly cat. Now, of course. I don't tend to do the Santa Fe colors, so I will change this up to match something that I like, and that's the best part. It's a pattern, not a kit. You can make it any colors you want that work for you. And then the last thing was sew bandages. These are so funny. And I thought it's really great too because it's latex free, and I have a bad latex allergy. So it has fun band-aids. Oh, good. You could tell, you could see it's clear. You could see which band aids are in there. I thought these were the cutest things. Now, I'm definitely going to I don't want to cut myself, but just a little nick or something like that, I'm not going to use one of these. I want to make sure that if I have to wear one, that I get to wear it for a long time and that everyone can see it. Because look how fun they are. So thank you so much. This was a fun package to receive. It's like folding a map. How are you going to get it fold back up together? I'm going to have a lot of fun playing with these scraps when I can actually sit down and work with some scraps. But for right now, I'm a little bit busy. But then again, once I get all my other scraps cut up and ready for my squares, I can go ahead and work on these a little bit each day. Then I can work on four patches, nine patches, and crumb blocks every day, right? I mean, what better way to spend my day than playing with fabric? I 
think even when you just shop at a Joann's, that each Joann's has, they have a set thing that they have. But I think based on the area that there's always going to be different things. And then if you get things from guild members and stuff, you never know how long things have been in their stash. Look at the cute crab. This fabric would be fun. So that's why it's so fun to play with other people's stuff. You never know what they're going to have. So I hope you guys have some time this week to play with your scraps, and I'll see you next time. Bye. I'm going to keep digging through the fabric and see what's in here. Look, Garfield. I love batiks. Bye.